الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله عن أبي عن نواس بن سمعان رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال البر حسن خلق والإثم ما حك في نفسك وكرهت أن يط يطلع يطلع عليه الناس رواه مسلم In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith in Sahih Muslim the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an رضي الله تعالى عن and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all the sahaba Ameen He said uh, it was narrated on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said Albir husnu khulq Righteousness is good manners Albir husnu khulq So righteousness is good manners Good manners are important وَالْإِثْمُ مَا حَكَ فِي نَفْسِكِ And sin is what you're not comfortable with in yourself. It, 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 it causes yourself to be uncomfortable. It causes you discomfort. And that you do not wish the people to find out about. And this is collected in Muslim. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It makes clear for us That first Righteousness uh, Good manners is from righteousness That the way we act with one another And the way we, whack, we act And portray Islam By our manners Is imperative and the Prophet ﷺ said that it is righteousness. We also learn from this hadith that the opposite, which is sinfulness, is that which yourself, that you become discomforted with that you're uncomfortable with, that which you, you're uncomfortable with and you do not wish the people to, to find out about. If we look at that, Ahabat that's a good qaida or principle that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defined for us and gave us to be able to determine uh, uh, sin. In that those things which cause you discomfort and you want to hide from the people that you do from those actions that that is something one sign that, that that is one sign that that is something sinful that's a sign that that is something sinful for example there are so many things that we do as individuals that even those closest to us do not know about are our feelings and things that we think and perhaps things that we believe that no one knows about except you and of course your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and so with that being the case for example if you Listen to something haram. For example, so 
a particular individual came to me once and said, man, a problem that I have, and this is a brother who's known, he's known for istiqam and righteousness, a good brother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I know him only ukhayr. And I know from him only sunnah. But he's confided in me. He said, man, what's difficult is that 50 cent, man. But that, I'm, I can't get rid of that. Or something to this effect, I recall. I'm not exposing, I'm giving an example. Because no one knows who this individual is. And nor will anybody probably even be able to ever figure out. But I want to give you an example that this was something he felt discomfort about. He confided in with me, not as a priest, thinking I could forgive sins or something crazy like this, but rather sometimes an individual, although we should cover our sins, sometimes we find it's psychologically helpful for us to talk about our issues or problems. So this was his way of doing so. And may Allah forgive us in him and rectify our condition in his. I mean, it'll be I mean. The point being, this is something he would never want because the people know him for righteousness. Never want the people to find out. Even his wife perhaps did not know that maybe this fitna of the music that he has to turn it on when he's in that car. He feels that, you know, he, he, he involves himself in that. That's something he doesn't want the people to know that you would feel discomfort about. Likewise, a fitna in this time, which is unlike, unlike any other time, is pornography and so forth. There are so many, as I recall listening some years ago to a program, and it was talking about uh, the Jewish community, that the problem of pornography and why they didn't speak out because they said so many of the priests or I mean the the rabbis themselves were inflicted with it so it's hard for them to talk about that issue because they felt like a type of hypocrisy and the point is they're very girls and boys who were in the cloak of being righteous or being people who are upright and yet it was a big problem affecting the whole community and that, as he mentioned, one of the rabbis on the program said something to the effect that the bedrooms, when they close those doors and turn off those lights, become like a brothel. And it could be your daughter, and it could be your son. Likewise, we have this infectious disease in the Muslim community, and in all communities, in fact. And this is something you would want no one to ever find out about. If you are inflicted with this disease, because it is a disease and it can be very addictive as they mention similar uh, has some uh, similarities to substance abuse and that this can be the case so in this situation no one you would never want anyone to find out about that sin you feel discomfort in yourself and you feel that you would never want anyone from your community especially and other than your community to find out about. So this is something the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us that criterion to let us know about some of those activities that make us feel discomfort that they in fact are sin and that's a, a characteristic of sin is that you don't want anyone to know about it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Nabi and Muhammad.